Hello, welcome back to NMI. Today we're going to talk about this tiny little board here, the Milk 5 Duo. This is a tiny $9 board that is Linux capable and it's based on a dual core RISC-V application processor. So let's check it out. <music> So browsing their website, we can see here uh, an, an introduction to the board. Um, the board is very small as we can see. It has 40 uh, pins, 20 on each side here. Uh, it is a castellated board that can be assembled uh, surface mount, like flush to the like uh, project or motherboard that you are designing for your project, or it can also uh, have pin headers here mounted, uh, and then you can use it as a dip IC or you can mount it to a breadboard. These five uh, pins here uh, at this other side, uh, they're used for ethernet. You can see that there's a USB-C uh, connector here. This is uh, an FPC connector for a camera. This is the SOC, the CV1800B. Um, this connector is for a micro SD card where we can store the Linux image, and this footprint is for an external uh, flash. Looking at the website, we can see the specs for this board. The the the, the SOC is a CVTAC CV1800B. It's a dual core C906. Uh, one core it runs at one gigahertz and the other core runs at 700 megahertz. It has a uh, 64 megabytes of DDR2 memory, a micro SD slot, a footprint for an NAND uh, flash chip, USB C, another USB 2 solder pad. I'm not sure I saw it. Um, 16 pin FPC connector for the camera, 26 IOs, and the board is 25, 21 by 51 millimeters. It's really small. Um, as we saw before, the processor is uh, two cores, one, one gigahertz, one 700 megahertz. The SOC has a TPU for AI acceleration. It has video encoding up to this resolution here. Um, yeah, you, we can see here that uh, it has a lot of features that are very camera centric. And uh, oh yeah, it apparently has OpenCV support with uh, hardware acceleration. So that is uh, very nice. Uh, the Ethernet Phi is built in, CSI2, uh, Serial Camera Interface, okay, Ethernet, we already discussed that, USB, it's 2.0 compliant and backwards uh, compatible with USB 1.1, yeah, host device, okay, USB Type C for storage media access. Mm, that's uh, interesting. Micro SD, SDIO is com SDIO zero is compatible with SD memory, SD 3.0. So it has a bunch of functionalities here on the GPIO, I square C, UART, SDIO. Oh, this is the oh yeah. So it has two SDIOs, SDIO zero and SDIO one. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so the SDIO zero is for the the micro SD, and SDIO one you might uh, connect another SD 
I/O capable device. So okay, what else? SPI PWM seven channels. That's interesting. JTAG. Okay. So here we have the pinout of the board, the board specs. Okay, nothing really new here. Uh, now let's take a look at the CV1800B data sheet. Okay, so there are three variants 180ZB, 1800B, 1801B. High performance, low power, blah blah blah, video compression, okay, DDR built in. Oh, so the DDR memory is built into the SOC. Mm, okay. So that explains, uh, we don't see any other memory here, right? There is a footprint for the flash, but you don't see another. And there's nothing on the bottom of the board. So yeah, so this chip has the two cores plus the DDR uh, memory, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so yeah, they say here that it provides height in integration and... Uh, makes it easier development and mass production and that's true you don't need to route and uh, install a, a separate uh, DDR memory but on the other hand you're constrained by the size of your existing memory or DRAM it uh, includes secure boot secure update okay the chip integrates an 8-bit MCU subsystem what that is unexpected so we have two 64-bit application cores and there is an extra 8-bit mcu we can re which can replace general external mcus to achieve the goal of saving bomb cost and power consumption okay um, now you got my attention i want to understand what is this 8-bit MCU that is built in. Uh, I doubt it's a RISC-V because I don't think there is an 8-bit uh, RISC-V uh, ISA. I know that there, there are 64, 32 bits. There is a compressed uh, instruction set that it goes down to 16 bits, but there's no, no 8 bits from what I recall. So I want to uh, check that out. Okay, so the three variants are here. We Oh, there's audio codec as well. Uh, okay, so 3M, 4M, 5M. I am not sure what is the meaning of that. Looking uh, here, there's a, like a block diagram. Okay, the MCU subsystem is here, MCU, RAM, GPIOs, okay, the all the peripherals here. Okay, nothing uh, new. DDR2, DDR3, oh, okay, so, mm, why DDR3? So the main processor, C906, 1 gigahertz, 32 cache, cache of instruction and 64 data okay integrated vector and floating point processing units the coprocessor is the same cpu but at 700 megahertz oh okay so the main processor has vector capable uh, fpu but the coprocessor has a simpler fpu so that is the main difference along with the the clock uh, rate it has the tpu so this is for neural acceleration video coding lots of standards here oh here 5m 4m oh this is oh okay so this is 5 megapixel 4 megapixel and 3 megapixel oh, okay so each soc here is designed to handle a different uh, resolution. So the one on the MUC uh, 5 Duo is this one. So it's the 4 megapixel one. JPEG encoding and decoding. Cool. MIPI. 
Okay. Yeah. ISP and image processing. Lots of features around, uh, as I mentioned before, cameras. CV hardware acceleration engine CV. Mixed mode of software and hardware. Oh, okay. So this SOC has a hardware accelerated open cv so some functions are implemented on software and some are accelerated by hardware oh that is pretty cool audio encoding and decoding mono microphone mono output okay network interface security there is an if used to kilobits yeah that is needed because if you have secure boot you're going to need a certificate you need to uh, store that in uh, otp so that is the otp memory for, for this kind of uh, programming Virtual interfaces, three single-ended ADCs, four I2C, one in MCU domain, three FBIs, five groups of UART, one in MCU domain. Oh, so this MCU uh, can control some of these interfaces. Four groups of 16-channel PWM. Oh. Two FDIO interfaces, one supports 3-volt FB 3.0, UHSI. Uh, one supports 3-volt connection to other FDIO devices, supporting speed up to UHSI. Okay. 51 GPIO interfaces, nine in MCU. Oh, so this MCU can even control some GPIOs directly. That is pretty interesting. Butane DRAM. Uh, DDR2, 64 megabytes, the one that, uh, the, the SOC that is uh, in, on the Duo. Oh, the other SOC has DDR3, faster, and it's 128, so 128 megabytes. So it's double the size of the DRAM. That is nice. SPI, NOR, SPI NAND, cool. SDK Linux 5.10. Okay, that's pretty standard. It's not the latest. It's not Linux 6, but I believe most uh, embedded uh, Linux uh, devices, they are still on this 5.10 or around 5.10. So that is expected. Our consumption? 180, uh, 1080p, big encode plus AI, around 500 milliwatts. Mm. Not sure if that is good or bad. I never uh, like designed anything uh, with this kind of application, so I don't know if like that sounds pretty low, but I have no idea. Operating voltage, the car operates at 0.9, IO 1.8 or 3 volts, DDR 1.8 for the two devices, and the one that is DDR3 is 1.35. Yeah, that makes sense. QFN package is used. What? Oh, I thought it was BGA. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now I can see. So this is QFN, not BGA. Oh, that is very nice. So that means that in theory, this could be hand soldered. I think it's pretty small. Yeah, I don't think it's doable, but who knows? Maybe someone that is very good uh, at soldering. Who knows? Um, okay, boot. There are multiple uh, boot modes for from NOR or from NAND. Yeah, but what about the boot from SD card? Yeah, it doesn't mention, but there, is, there are two pins here, so probably there are. Yeah, there are other boot modes. What else? The, this is the memory map, all the register, all the peripherals here, pin locks, okay, PWM, EFUs, key scan. Hmm. Um, SAR ADC. So this is a successive approximation register type ADC, okay? Lots like 5 S, I2C, SPI NAND, Ethernet, I2S. Oh, so this is the audio uh, inter digital interface, UART, SPI, AUD, SRC, no idea of what this is, SD0, SD1, DMA, USB, ROM, okay? RTC SYS. There's a lot of things here. Maybe this is a different power domain? Um, I don't know. DDR? Image V, Image D. I don't know what this is. Um... IDC control, JPEG, Kodak, cool. Oh, here it's the H264 Kodak, H265 Kodak control, FBI NOR, and DDR. Okay. What else? Here is the packaging. So, yeah, QFM. That is mm, unexpected. The pinouts are here. Um, USB, yeah. Okay, SD0, SD1, ADC. Okay. What else? Oh, this is the, the temperature profile for soldering. Okay. Re baking, power. Okay, yeah, the power consumption again. Temperatures, destructive voltage. I guess this is the maximum. Yeah, yeah, the absolute maximum voltage. Power sequencing. Oh, okay, that is interesting. So, yeah, most or all these um, 
SOCs that are Linux capable, they require, because they have different voltage rails, they require uh, power sequencing. So you need a, an external PMIC controlling the, the power up and power down sequencing. So on this guy we have, uh, I think we saw four domains. So the core, 1.8. No, oh no, no, yeah, five domains core 1.8, 1 1.8, 1 uh, or 3.3, 3.3, and DDR domain. Uh, okay, oh, okay, so maybe, yeah, that this is simpler because it so it says here that the, the core voltage and the 1.8 domain they can be powered at the same time. Or the core domain can be powered before 1.8, but both of them they need to be powered before 3 volts domain. So we can see that here. And then the power down sequencing is the opposite. First we power down 3 volts and then the other one. Okay, that is not too complex. Uh, okay, the risks. Uh, the chip provides two pins power sec 1 and power sec 2. Oh! Okay, so this means that we don't need a, an external PMIC and uh, SOC controls its own power sequencing. Yeah, SEC1 controls the first these ones and SEC2 controls this one. Oh, oh, that is super nice. So that means that we probably just need external regulators with enables. And then these two pins can enable the the sequencing. Hmm. Yeah, that's my guess. I'm not sure yet. Um, okay. Okay, we have the voltage. What else? Now a lot of electrical parameters. I'm not super interested on that right now. Okay, timing. I am not interested on that. Let's see. Let's go to the table of contents. I, I want to check the 8-bit MCU. To be honest, uh, that got me curious. I want to understand what kind of MCU. Oh! Here it is. Oh, no way. This is an 8051 subsystem. 232. Let's go there. 232. And uh, here we are. Overview. Oh, man. No way. Unbelievable. So we have a dual core 64 bit risk 5 with, <laughs> with an internal 8051. 80, oh, that is really unexpected subsystem is configured uh, with an 8051 an i2c uart spi nor sd controller what even the sd controller a timer trip management and mailbox ip yeah so this is for exchange data with the application core the system software can use the 8051 to manage wake up conditions and wake up the system while it is in sleep. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Um, the 8051, yeah, it supports the instruction set, frequency range from what? 25 megahertz to up to 300 megahertz. Whoa. I don't think I ever saw an. 8051 running at 300 megahertz. That is a first. Amazing. Uh, two bit data access. Debugging. Yeah, that's pretty cool. 8 kilobytes AHB S RAM. So there's a static RAM. That can be used by 8051 as instruction TCM or temporary storage for the. Oh, okay. So you can store code or data on this internal S RAM. Oh, yeah. And supports code banking. So you can have 64, 64 kilobyte banks. Oh, that is a lot. Yeah, that is a very unusual 8051. Yeah. Oh, here is the block diagram. Oh, okay. Well, I was not expecting to find an 8-bit MCU inside this SOC. And for sure not an 8051. That is really unexpected. But I, yeah, I'm kind of, I like, I kind of like it because it mixes new and old stuff. So that's something that I really enjoy. Um, I guess, yeah, that's it for now. There's a lot of things that we can see, like how big is this uh, data sheet? 
600 pages, 692 pages, yeah. So I have here the repository, the dual build root SDK repository. And as you can guess, this is based on build root. Uh, the readme file here is pretty nice. It uh, covers again the basics, uh, the, the like a, a brief description of the hardware. It has a quick start guide here, so everything that you need to download uh, on Linux. Uh, this is Ubuntu 20.04, Ubuntu 22.04. Yeah, okay. Uh, or even, oh, yeah, that's nice. So it, they are also provide some. Uh, Instructions for those running on Windows using WSL. Okay, so oh, even cloning the repository. Okay, so here how you clone the repository, and then there is this one-click compilation. Uh, so there is this sh script that we can run, and it's gonna build everything. The first time compilation will automatically download. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's uh, usual on build root. So if the tool chain is not there, it's gonna download for you, and it's 180 megabytes in size. To be honest, I already did that. So I installed the the SDK. I cloned the repository, and I, I already built the image. I, I wanted to try it out. So yeah, in my case, uh, we're not gonna see it downloading because that is uh, already, it, that already happened. Uh, okay, the step by step uh, here. Oh, even the SD card burning. Yeah, burning. I don't like this. Uh, yeah, but sometimes some people say burning, but I prefer flashing. Um, I think burning is more like when we burned CDs, I guess, because uh, that used lasers, but, or DVDs or whatever, but for flash, I definitely, I don't think we are burning anything, or maybe we are, I don't know, well, maybe, some people definitely, they burn uh, stuff, but uh, anyway, yeah, so they have, yeah, here the instructions, oh yeah, you can use Balina Etcher or other tools or you, the good old DD. Uh, I have Balina here, so we can uh, show how to use Balina for that. Uh, and then the power on, okay, so first let's uh, now take a look at the repository and let's build it. So here we are on the repository already, and uh, if we ls, we're gonna see all the folders here or directories, whatever you prefer. And yeah, folder is like a newer term, but the older term is directory. And here is our script. So let's try and build this thing. Uh, build, build. Okay, we're ready to build. And here we go. Uh, Maybe this, I think this takes some time. Well, yeah, even this is a, a Ryzen uh, 9 3900, so a 12 core, 24 thread um, CPU, but like it, it takes some time. So yeah, let's relax and wait.
So while we wait for build root to build the image and, and do its uh, magic, uh, I'm going to show you. I'm going to use this uh, micro SD. This is a four gigabyte uh, micro SD and this adapter. This is a USB adapter. So I'm going to use this. Oh, it's done. So I'm going to use this and Balina to uh, flash the image here. So you can see there that image, uh, gener ge image generation uh, was successful and the output is on Alt, Milk, 5, Duo and the date. So let's uh, flash the micro SD. So as I mentioned before, we're going to use Balina Etcher. So let's uh, select Oh, it's not here. Um Milk Duo Build Root. So I I already downloaded also the image before because I wanted to try while I was waiting for the whole thing to happen like downloading the image and everything. But now we built it from um, from scratch, and that's not the first time I I'm building it, uh, and probably should delete the other two because I don't need them. Hmm. Okay, I don't have the permissions to delete yeah it doesn't matter i can do that later but oh yeah i'm this is not the oh yeah never mind yeah this is not the navigation so here i'm going to select the latest image and open and now select the target this is my micro sd and select and and here we go balina not only flashes or like generates the image but it's also it will also uh verify the image after flashing so that is something that i find uh pretty cool about uh, balina and that's one of the reasons i like using it so unfortunately the image here is small it's less than a gigabyte so it's uh, pretty fast for like flashing it so yeah let's see Okay, now we're validating and that is uh, much faster than flashing. And yay, yeah, okay. So it was uh, successful. Now I'm going to remove that micro SD, install on the board and I'm going to have a camera facing the board and we can see it booting up. Just give me uh, a few seconds. Okay, so now the micro SD card is installed. And all I need to do is to power up the board. And we're going to see, uh, well, we're not going to see, but Linux is going to boot up. And we are going to be able to connect to the board. So there you go, power is up, the red LED, and Linux is going to boot up, and the uh, blue LED is going to start to blink, and there you go, so the board is up. Now, the nice thing about this board is that we can use R and this to connect to the board, so IP address should show us so this the last one here is the board so let's ssh root at 192.168 what 
and what is the password milk five and there we go now we are on the system ls so cd root ls so here we are on the root file system um we can go to cd proc ls cat cpu info rv64 um and uh, that's it this is our cv1800b board booting up on linux and i hope you like this video uh, and the next time we're gonna put this uh, board to do something useful and we're gonna start playing with it um, I saw on the documentation that Free Artos is going or is supported or is going to be supported. Apparently, it's not uh, fully supported yet. So, the second uh, C906 uh, core is going to support uh, Free Artos, run Free Artos. I'm also interested to learn how we can program that AT51. Uh, so, stay tuned. See you next time. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up. See you next time.